Hi there. Um, I don't normally do this, um, but um, I've had a lot of comments since I came back from Las Vegas um, about the fact that people who haven't met me don't believe that my face is covered by uh, three quarters of a birthmark. Uh, my three quarters of my face is covered by a birthmark, and um, that all I use is um, I ne or now all I use is a new concealer that um, came out last week and some. Um, a little bit heavier than a tinted moisturiser so um, I just wanted to um, show first of all my birthmark I mean the lighting isn't great in here um, for, from where I've got the the camera situated because I still need to be able to see what I'm doing because I'm gonna put my makeup on while I'm talking to you but if you can see um, obviously there's a port wine stain covers all of this cheek this eye um, round here um, you see I've this eye is is bloodshot and that's actually birthmark within that eye um so and i've got a little map of the british isles here um and yes um since i i uh started using the new concealer people have been saying to me that my makeup looks really really fresh and basically they don't believe me so um i'm doing this um to show how easy it is to con to conceal a port wine stain and if you know anyone that has um a port wine birthmark that has issues with it, you know, issues covering it, issues um, with it, you know, I've got it on my hand as well and, and still nowadays I have people refusing to hand me change because it may well be contagious and they don't know what it is and all it is is a lack of oxyhemoglobin in my blood vessels is making the blood stick to just below the surface of the skin which is why we can see it and also because it's blood under the skin, um, when I get cold um, I go purpley blue because it, yeah that's just um that's what a birthmark is so um for those that don't believe that i use as little as i do now um i just use my primer and um my mother started covering my birthmark um when i was three she was um accused in the street in crouch End, where we lived by a, an eight-year-old boy of assaulting me of burning me of pouring boiling water over me and um, he threatened to contact his father who um, worked for the NSPCC and my mother was mortified she was devastated that people noticed the birthmark um, my mother had adopted me when um, when I was a month old I came home with her and um, after she died I was going through some paperwork of hers now I'm just going to put the concealer on it's a liquid concealer um, I'm shaking while I'm doing this because it's so not like me to, to show my birthmark and I do actually feel a little bit sick um, because this isn't the sort of thing I do but just if it can help somebody else, you know, if, if you can share it with somebody that it might help then, you know, it's worth it for me. Um, so yes, when I was clearing out my mother's paperwork after she died, um, I found a letter, a draft letter from her solicitor that he was going to send the judge um, to, to do with my adoption and I'd found that um, another family had been considering adopting me but in 1973 a birthmark was considered a serious disability and they didn't know what my life expectancy would be um, and so the other family in question had decided not to adopt me um, until they had had me checked out by doctors and um, knew I wasn't going to die and I, you know, I wasn't going to have health issues and strangely enough they weren't allowed to adopt me you know they were basically told to clear off um and sorry I'm, i've also got a mirror behind here which is a bit easier to see in um and uh yes so they weren't that they were basically sent packing and my mother came to see me and apparently she didn't notice the birthmark she just picked me up and cuddled me and that's even harder now knowing she's not here but hey so um yes so bring forward three years and my mother who'd never batted an eyelid about my birthmark and assumed um, that nobody else could see it either um, was shocked when this child attacked her in the street and so she started putting makeup on me because she didn't want me to be you know she didn't want me to be attacked to be self uh, self-conscious and, and things like that so um, and in the early 70s, we're talking 1976, really the only makeup there was was um, to, to conceal birthmarks was heavy camouflage makeup where to cover the red, 
you would have to put on a white, the only way I can describe it is paste. Um, and then you would have to cover that with a brown um, paste and mix in um, to get the right coverage, uh, you know, to, to get as close to skin colour as you can. And sorry, I'm looking away from you. It's um, the lighting in here is a bit different today because it was the best lighting I could get for the um, to do this on the iPad. So I, I do apologise. It's taken me a bit longer than it usually does because I just whop this on and do the school run in a few minutes in the morning now. Um, but where was I? Where was I? Where was I? Um, yes, so um, the makeup was really, really heavy and it really felt hot, hideous. The, the way I feel best describes it is, you, you know, in Mrs. Doubtfire, when um, the social worker comes around and he's having to pretend to be Daniel and Mrs. Doubtfire and he's got his face mask off and he's in the kitchen and she comes in and he's got to pretend to be Mrs. Doubtfire and he slams his face into the cake and he comes up with all this thick, heavy gloop on. I mean, I know it's cake mix, but that's the best way to describe how my skin felt growing up um, with this heavy, heavy, heavy makeup on. And although my mother had um, put the makeup on to um, conceal the birthmark so nobody would notice, it led to bullying. Um, not physical bullying, but mental bullying. Um, I looked like a Red Indian. I was called Miss Piggy. Um, I was called Ready Breck, which um, anyone watching in the States, um, it's a little bit like porridge, but um, it's thick and gloopy and it, it's, it was the colour of my skin. And even now, whenever I see an advert for Ready Breck or have to make it for my children, I cry because it just, um, it brings it all back. So, and when my children, uh, when um, my colleague, you know, my friends at school were starting to get into makeup and lipstick, I was like, nah, not interested because it was the bane of my life. Um, I, so there, that's the, but it's, it's not done brilliantly today, as I say again, because of the lighting, but that birthmark's concealed. Oh, I need a little bit more there. Um, and um, oh, I keep losing my place. I do apologise. Um, so yes. Yeah, so and as I got a bit older, um, makeup got a bit better, and um, I ended up wearing um, a, um, a very good brand. I'm not going to name names because it's well, actually, it was Estee Lauder. There's nothing wrong with Estee Lauder. It's a good brand. And but the only thing I found with it was it was double wear, and it's really, really, really thick, heavy makeup. And again, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. I'm not criticising it, but for me, as a as a teenager, it was too heavy. You know, people were commenting on, oh my God, you've got a lot of makeup on, or oh, your makeup looks good today, rather than oh, your skin's looking good. And um, I remember um, going on a ski trip once with school, and. Um, one of the, in French, one of the you know ch other children at the resorts walked past and said to their friends, "Trop de maquillage," which is basically too much makeup, um, which hurt me because there was nothing I could do about it. So, um, so yeah. So back to this. I've just concealed and I'm now using my CC cream, which is it's it's a little bit heavier than a tinted moisturizer, but there's um, there's moisturizer in it, and it, I think the CC stands for color cream. Um, but again, I'm just wiping that over very gently and it's, you know, it's looking like decent makeup. Well, at least I think it is. Well, it usually does. I, I dare say it's not so good while I'm doing a Facebook live. Um, but yeah, so, and, um, so all my life I've worn heavy makeup. Um, my skin has never felt good. My skin's always been good because I've always cleaned it properly. Um, because wearing a lot of makeup, I need to. But um, and then last last year, um, having been introduced to Arbon through Helen XL, um, and really initially I just started trying the products to support her, because I you know I was happy with what I was using. I didn't need to use anything else, um, and I fell in love with the other products because I refused to use the makeup. Refused to use the makeup because I was fine and I was happy with what I was using and um, there was no need to change it and I didn't want people to see my birthmark and oh what if I tried it and people would be able to see my birthmark through it and ah! So and then um, last year, um, late last year I think it was, I bit the bullet and I started using Arbonne makeup and the difference it has made, I don't feel like I'm wearing makeup anymore. Um, the um, Sorry, I keep losing track because it's, yeah, it's quite, it's stressful for me to do this. So I'm sorry. And I'm sorry that I keep apologising because I shouldn't be because there's 
nothing wrong with me being me. But um, I'm just feeling very self-conscious and a little vulnerable. Um, so yes, yeah, so I discovered the Arbonne um, foundation and concealer. And um, earlier this year, I tried using the CC cream because it was a bit quicker than using a concealer you know with a with a, a foundation you know with a foundation you need to put it on with a brush or a sponge and even it up in this I just slap it well literally as you can see or not slap it on as I stand talking um but and the difference it's made to me I actually have people commenting now on how good my skin is looking for the first time ever I'm feeling that my skin is breathing I'm not you know I can touch my face without and it feels like skin it doesn't feel like I'm touching skin underneath 17 tons of makeup. Um, and I know that it's, it's, it's making a big difference to me confidence wise. You, sorry, I'm, I'm still shaking. Um, you might not think that it could make such a difference to somebody, but it does. And you know, the amount, as I say, the amount of people that still don't hand me change because of my birthmark, you'll always find me with longer sleeves on usually. Um, Funny thing is, in America, um, I don't mind so much because people don't seem to um, bat an eyelid to a birthmark. Um, you can always tell the Brits abroad, though, because they'll be the ones nudging and pointing, which is a bit rub. It makes me ashamed to be British, and I'm, I'm not ashamed to be British, but that, that does upset me that we seem to have that mentality about staring at people that um, are a bit different. Um, so there, that is... Um, my CC, I can't get the lid on because I'm shaking. Um, so that is my CC cream on. It might not be the best job in the world today, um, but um, and now all I'm going to do is get my um, powder out, which just fixes it. And I just and I a lot of people say you should put um, powder on with a brush, but I, again, I don't like the feel of that on on my skin. Um, so. Yes, yeah, sorry. Um, so yeah, this is how simple it is now for me with a port wine stain that covers three quarters of my face um, that has been the bane of my life that I have to that I've had to I haven't had to but you know I suppose I could have become stronger years ago and gone for it. But the funny thing is, it, it's through. The personal development I've had through Arbon, you know, I know I keep going on about Arbon, but the, the, these products are fantastic, and they they have made a difference to my life. And you know, look there, I've got a birthmark covering three quarters of my face, and I don't think it shows. Um, so, and then all yeah. So, sorry, I'm I'm starting to cry now because. It's brought up a lot, you know, talking about my mother and things like that, so bear with me, I'm sorry. So anyway, there's my makeup, all done. All I will do now, I don't know where my, put my mascara on, at least give myself some eyes. Um, lovely little lengthening mascara there. Um, and the thing is, I don't even really need to do any eyebrow pencil or anything like that, although... But it would be a good idea and find my oh there's my eyeliner there um i won't put my blusher on i will put my lippy on because i've got a nice lippy um but there you go i look relatively human um i don't know i've put my concealer down somewhere so of course i can't find it um but there that is how easy it is for me with a port wine stain covering three quarters of my face to cover it, to ha look, you know, it's, you can still see the bags under my eyes. I could, should do something, I should sleep better. Um, but yes, it's, it's easy to do. And if you know anyone that has issues with a birthmark, issues with a port wine stain, issues with self-confidence because of it, um, has rosacea, some redness that they want to conceal, I'm putting my lippy on, I don't care. I should have done that first. That probably would have given me the confidence to get through, to, you know, without blubbing. Lippy makes a world of difference to a girl. Um, so, yeah, if I can help anyone, whether it be through a makeup that helps them conceal something or just a lightweight makeup that makes them want to feel good, or if you know someone that's got a birthmark and has issues with it, like I have, please connect me because maybe... 
I can help them by talking to them. You know, maybe my story will help them. I don't know. But um, yes, yeah, so I genuinely do only wear now. I've lost it. Where's the concealer gone? A con I've lost the concealer lost the concealer I wear so yeah I'm the concealers in my hand somewhere my concealer and my CC cream with a bit of primer underneath and you'd never know I had a birthmark so um, thank you for watching and yes if I can help please share thank you cheers bye